Hey guys, this is Tech Tuesday, and today we're going to take a look at the Xbox One, the Xbox 720, Durango, Fusion, whatever you've heard it called. It's called the Xbox One, and we're going to compare it to the PS4. I might do some of these again over time as more details emerge, but it should be cool. Let the console wars begin. <laughs> Neither the Xbox One nor the PS4 have discrete central processing units, CPUs, or graphics processing units, GPUs. Instead, they have a combined unit, and that's called an APU, an accelerated processing unit. It's about the same. Sometimes little trade-offs are made. For example, they share RAM. But by and large, it's the same general concept. Now you'd think these would be easy to compare because they're both based on AMD's 8-core Jaguar CPU architecture. The thing is, the Xbox One is a little bit slower. It operates at 1.6 gigahertz, whereas the PS4 operates at 2 gigahertz. A notable speed increase. But there's more complication to it than just that. The Xbox One is fed by DDR3 memory, while the PS4 is fed by DDR5 memory. One, the DDR3, is better at supplying the CPU with what it really needs, and the other is better at supplying the graphics unit with what it really needs. So which one's better? Probably the PS4. It operates at a higher clock rate, and RAM isn't usually the bottleneck in keeping a CPU fully optimized. But let's keep looking at the different specs. Now it's time to talk graphics processing. Over on the Xbox side, they haven't released the specs yet. We know on the PS4, they have graphics processing power equal to 1.84 teraflops per second, which is a good amount. That's equivalent to about what a $300 sort of good but not super great PC card will get you right now. So pretty good. On the Xbox side, they haven't released their specs yet, so we don't know. But we do know some other stuff. Over on the PS4, there's that DDR5 RAM again. The DDR5 is really well suited to graphics processing. So the, the performance that we can get over there, it's going to have a natural advantage. If Xbox is going to outperform the PS4, then the architecture is going to have to be doing something special to outperform the DDR5 RAM that we've got on the PS4. But it does have a trick up its sleeve. It has 32 megabytes, megabytes, not gigabytes, worth of... ES RAM on there. ES RAM is quick, it's snappy, and it's fully devoted to the graphics processing unit, unlike the system RAM that's being shared by everything else. So both of these come with eight gigabyte, yeah, eight gigabytes of system RAM, but only the Xbox has 32 megabytes of dedicated speedy little ES RAM to help, one would think, make up for the, uh, the DDR3 RAM that's supplying it you know, for the most part. Who's better? I don't know. I don't know who's better. We just don't know the performance specs that have come out. We don't even know the architecture on the Xbox One side. They've kept it a secret so far. So until the thing comes out and they start you know, benchmarking it, then we won't know for sure. But it's time to talk more about RAM because we've just been alluding to it. So let's talk DDR3 versus DDR5. DDR3 has low latency, which means that the moment that you want the data to flow through it, it flows through it quickly. DDR5 has high bandwidth, which means that when you need a lot of data to flow through it, it's going to zip right on through. Which is better? Well, for your CPU, the DDR3 is better. The CPU is constantly context switching. It's making one decision. It's looking left. It's looking right. It's juking. It's jiving. That's what a CPU does. A GPU, on the other, on the other hand, for your graphics, it kind of goes in a straight line. It knows what it needs to do a CPU, in this case, can do eight things at a time for each of these consoles. The GPUs, we don't know the exact numbers, but let's say it's hundreds of things at one time. It needs lots of bandwidth. So that's why a DDR5 memory system is much better for graphics performance, but a DDR3 memory system is better for CPU performance. Which is better as an overall choice? Well, probably DDR5, you know, even though it's a little slower to get that first byte of data through, it's going to make up for it with its higher bandwidth. But the Xbox guys weren't stupid, like I said earlier. They have this DDR5-like performance in terms of 32 megabytes worth of dedicated GPU RAM, and it should even up the score a little bit. So there's your RAM comparison. 
Now, while it's pretty early to declare PS4 to be the performance victor here, it's looking like it's just a tiny bit faster than the Xbox based on hardware alone. But there's more to the equation than just that. The Xbox has a secret advantage, and it's that it runs Windows. So here's why. So when a developer is writing a multi-platform game, there are three main platforms, Xbox, PC, and PS4, in no particular order. The thing is, the Xbox and the PC both run on the Windows kernel, and that gives it an advantage because it has less work to do than the PS4. PS4 games are typically a port. That's not an insult. That's just that's how you would write it. That's how professional operations write things for more than one platform. They port them to the next one. But this is why it's better to not be the port. On the Xbox, you write your software. That's typically a game, but it could be your Netflix client, it could be your Facebook client, your browser, or whatever. And then that software talks to the operating system, and that operating system talks to the hardware. There's a little more to it than that, but just work with me here. Over on the PS4, they have that same level of software, and then that has to go through some sort of abstraction layer. It has to have some sort of extra thing written to make the PS4 behave like the other platforms. That's normally the way that software is written. And that's not just games, that's everywhere. So the software talks to this abstraction layer so that the same calls, the same application programming interfaces that they're used to calling over on the Windows machines is available on the PS4. And then after it goes through that abstraction layer, it talks to the operating system and then it talks to the hardware. It's as if the PS4 has to operate kind of with one arm tied behind its back. That's an exaggeration. The abstraction layer is not that inefficient. It's not. That's why you can hardly tell the difference between Call of Duty on a PS4 and on an Xbox. I've played both. They're basically the same. Having said that, even people that love the PS4, like Only Use Me Blade or Ronaldinho or more, Wings of Redemption, eventually come around to the idea that, you know what? It just runs that tiny bit smoother over on the Xbox. The reason why... It was targeted for that, and then it was ported over to the PlayStation. That's how you write multi-platform software. It's not incompetence, it's standard industry practice, and there isn't a better way to do it. Because of that, the fact that the Xbox has a 1.6 gigahertz processor versus the 2 gigahertz processor, or the fact that it has DDR3 RAM versus DDR5, it might still be the better platform for gaming, even though it's at a slight hardware disadvantage. Time will tell. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe in the top right. I do a deep dive like this every week. On that note, if on the left side, if you click there on Tech Tuesdays, you can see the other videos in this series. On the right side, Mail Monday, it was really good this week. The letters were cool. Check those out. Have a good day.